In this video, I'm going to cover how we import presentations, songs, images into ProPresenter to use in our day-to-day. -day. So we'll jump right into that. The first thing that I'm going to go over is how to import songs. So if we scroll down here, we can see we got a couple of songs in place already. Um, but let's say they want to bring in another one. Easiest way to bring up our search menu is Control F, or you can hit the search button up here at the top. When you do that, it brings up this search window. First place to check is always uh, our library. So you can just type in um, the name of the song. If it shows up, that means it's in uh, the library and it's already been imported. From there, we can just drag and drop it onto the presentation. There's our song. When you first bring in a new song, you're going to want to click this Arrangements button. And then we can either use an arrangement that's already been made or make a new one depending on uh, who the worship leader is. Now I'm going to search for a song that we don't have in our library. So if I bring up uh, this oldie but goodie, he longs. Uh, you can see that in our library, nothing shows up. So if I go over one icon and click on this, the Song Select logo, it'll now search Song Select for the song. And here's our Battle Belongs. It'll give you a um, brief snippet of the song so you can figure out if it's the right one. And you hit Import. That brings up our Import window. Here we use Line Break and Two Lines Per Slide. I just find it's less distracting uh, having just two lines on than four, um, and it just makes it overall look a bit neater. The size will always be 1080, that's what we're running here. This theme one should be selected with a proper theme, but this is where you would apply the, the themes that we build so that when the slides get imported, they look how we want them to look. So, there's some pre-built ones here that we don't really use. I made this one called User, and click on that. There's a bunch here, and the main screen two lines is our normal template. Select that. It will apply font, capitalization. Uh, there's a box behind the lyrics that help them uh, stick out a bit more. And then the destination. We have our library. We want all the songs to be imported to the songs library. And then if you're building a playlist um, for the next service, then you can also just select it right here so you don't have to go find it in the songs library. So let's add this to the Tuesday Chapel. We'll hit import. And it brings it in. But compared to the other songs that we use, you can see here I've got background and a blank. This one doesn't have that. So every time you import a new song, we just need to add in two new slides. So at the bottom, go add new blank slide, do it twice. Right click on the first one you added, go to group, background. And it'll change both of them to be background, but we only want the one slide. So the next one, go group, blank. And then in the arrangements view, for the groups, we can move background to the front, and that's where we'll put our background image uh, for the song. And then this blank slide is just a blank at the end that uh, we can use um, for some space between the start of the next song. The last way I would import a song is using the CCLI number. By using the CCLI number, we can be sure that we have the exact song that the worship leader is requesting. So if we jump onto the web and go to the services app for Planning Center, we can see they have their songs listed here. So if I click on this first one and go over to song, it's going to give me some song information, including the CCLI number. So if I copy this and then bring up our search window and put that in, you can see that it brings up the exact song that, we've been, that we were hoping to use. 
and then it would just be drag and drop because we have it in our library. If we didn't, then we would import it from song select. So that covers um, importing songs uh, on ProPresenter. So the next thing we're going to go on to is importing presentations. So when we have speakers come in, uh, whether they're our staff or from outside of the school, they generally will bring a USB stick uh, with a PowerPoint presentation because they generally don't have access to ProPresenter. So it's really easy to actually to import that into ProPresenter, but there's a few things that we have to be aware of. So actually importing it, if we go up to File and go Import PowerPoint. You can see it'll, uh, in this case, it's going to downloads and it'll just show every PowerPoint that has been um, downloaded onto this computer. Um, if it's a speaker coming in, they'll probably have a USB stick, and so that'll probably be over here somewhere. Um, once you found the presentation, you just select the one you want. So let's go with College 101. Hit open. It's going to bring up this importing presentation, and then it's going to eventually bring up the selected library. So this is where we want to save the stuff. So this would be we have, depending on what day of chapel it is, it'll go on the Monday or Tuesday. If it's an assembly uh, uh, chapel, then it would go in this assembly presentations library. And then if it's a special event, we go in the special presentation. So this one would be a special presentation. Hit OK. We already have it in here, but let's just say right over. So on the side, I have all my libraries here. So if I go to special presentation, there's College 101, just drag and drop that onto whichever presentation you want it on. There it is. Now, the thing that you have to be aware of is when, it's, when you do this import of a PowerPoint, all it's doing is taking the final state of a slide and turning that into a picture or a JPEG and then importing it. It's actually in the background, it's opening PowerPoint, saving each slide as a JPEG, and then it's importing that as a presentation. So where this can become a problem, especially for people coming in that aren't used to our system or aren't used to using ProPresenter, if they put multi-click um, animations on their slides, those are all lost. So if they have builds where they'll, one thing will come up and then the next thing will come up, or even sometimes something will come up over top of it, when you import to ProPresenter, all it's going to do is go, this is the final uh, look of this slide, and then take a picture of that. So sometimes there might be information covering other information. And once you do that, you can't edit it in uh, ProPresenter. If I open this slide up in ProPresenter, all I get is that JPEG as a background. I can't change any of this text. I can write new text over top, but that's it. So, if you um, are the person running this, when a new uh, presentation comes in, I will often open in PowerPoint and just go through and make sure that I'm not going to run any of those issues. The only way around that, if they do still want that multi-click, bring the points up one at a time, um, they need to make a slide for every point. So the first slide would have point one. The second slide would have point one and point two. And the third slide would have point one, two, and three, etc. So by making all those extra slides, it'll just it'll create the look of having a multi-click presentation. So that's the only thing you have to be worried about with that. The final thing we're going to look at importing is pictures or video. So if someone brings you a picture file or a video file, and we need to get that into ProPresenter, that's done uh, through our media bin. You don't just drag and drop it on. It generally won't work that way. So if we click on media up here, that'll bring up our media bin here. Most of it is um, background uh, videos for motion backgrounds. But if you go to the very bottom, we have a section here called pictures and video. And Anything that's just a solid picture, whether that's some slides that were imported as pictures on their own, 
or um, just some stuff we'll use generally in the service, like our logo, or if we have some announcement slides, <clears throat> those will go there. If uh, what they're giving you is actually a video, then they'll end up um, over on this side. So the thing to notice with these is they're actually, they've got this little light bulb in here. And so what that means is that they are smart playlists. So that means is that they're connected to a folder on the desktop. You don't actually add anything directly to this folder. It's done outside and added in afterwards. So if I go into the file explorer, you can see I've got these pinned here. This is announcements picture, service elements picture, announcements video, service elements video, prepo service video. These are the smart folders that are linked to in ProPresenter. So if you want to add uh, an announcement slide, you take the picture of the announcement slide, generally from downloads if you downloaded it, and drag and drop it into here. So as, as an example, let's take this one and we'll move it out. So we'll put this back into downloads. We go to our announcements picture folder. These are the announcements that are available. So now if we go to File Explorer and pull this photo and drop it onto announcements pictures, jump back here, you can see that it added it in here. So any announcement slides they just get dropped into this folder and they will show up in the announcements under pictures in ProPresenter. From there, you can just drag and drop those into uh, different things. And that covers um, importing in ProPresenter. So if you're asked to uh, show some slides or uh, a video, uh, this video should help you figure out how to get that into the right place. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you want, you can check out my channel for some other training videos on related stuff, either ProPresenter or Sound. And uh, hope you have a good day. Thanks.